Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we're doing Kaspersky vs Bitdefender again. Two of the most popular paid AV programs, we're going to figure out which one is better empirically with the power of Python based automation and a ton of malware samples. Should be super exciting. I have two test systems set up, one running Bitdefender on the left and Kaspersky on the right. Both of these products are set up as default. I haven't changed any settings. I will show you that they're both up to date. I won't spend too much time talking about the UI. I like both of these products. They're very simplistic and easy to use. Personally, I kind of like the Kaspersky design scheme a bit better. I liked Bitdefenders last year. But let's face it, you don't get AV for the looks. You get it for how it functions and whether or not it's able to protect you, which is what we'll be testing today. Before we get started though, a quick disclaimer, I'm not paid or sponsored to make this video by any of these companies, but I will have affiliate links to both of these products, so if you're going to purchase either of them, you can use those to get a discount. I do these tests on my own time, so a big thank you to those of you who've been using my links, I really appreciate it. But now, let's get testing! First I'll have to turn off the protection for a few minutes, don't worry, we'll turn it back on before we actually do anything. Now here we have some classified malware samples. I've already gone through these, removed duplicates. We've done quite a bit of processing to get to 1499 items. These include ransomware, PUPs, all kinds of threats, and they're all fairly new within this week. Many of them might be a day old, so it should be a fun test. Now I'm going to grab this folder and drag it onto both of these computers. Now that we have the folder, we're going to start our script in the background. All this will do essentially is go through these files one by one and test whether or not they're blocked. This is going to be a proactive test, which means that the threats will be loaded into memory, and if they don't load into memory, it's considered a block. But later on, we'll go through the systems and check if there are any infections. That way we'll know if there's any reactive blocking as well. Now it's time to re-enable real-time protection. As you can see, all the shields are turned on for Bitdefender. I will do the same for Kaspersky. As you can see, everything's turned on. I will also have Task Manager running in the background so you can look at the resource usage in real time as these files are executed. Looks like both our products are ready. Let's get testing. The Defender is giving us some notifications, so is Kaspersky now. Interestingly, the Bit Defender system is completely maxed out at 100% CPU. The Kaspersky one seems to be going a bit easier on the system resources. It could just be the way the products are configured. Maybe Kaspersky does not run with as high priority as Bit Defender. Also, interestingly, Kaspersky is ahead in terms of the percentage completion, so even though it's using fewer resources, somehow it's actually running faster. Although, keep in mind, all of this is within a margin of error because we are running two different virtual machines. They do have the same specs, in fact, they're exact clones, but there's still process prioritization on the host and things like that. So take all of this with a grain of salt. The most important thing is how many threats are blocked at the end. Interesting, it seems on Bitdefender's end our process crashed, so I will have to restart it. Woohoo! The script has finally finished executing on both systems. Let's see what we have here. We have 98.13% on Bitdefender and 99.4% on Kaspersky. Excellent results for both products. I think the margin is so close it could go either way. This time though the edge goes to Kaspersky. I'm really happy to see that because Bitdefender did win the last one. I will tell you a bit more about the differences between these two products and which one I would prefer for which scenario a bit later. But first I want to talk about something interesting that happened on the Bitdefender system. I did have to restart the whole script 
because Bitdefender actually blocked the process following, I guess, the malware execution chain. What it would effectively do after detecting a lot of malware being started by this process is it would just go back and terminate this process. In order to get around that, I had to just add a couple of things to exclusion. So I added Python and PowerShell to exclusions in advanced threat defense, which allowed me to complete the test. Now, what are your personal thoughts on this? Do you think it is smart to follow the process execution chain and terminate the host process? I'm sure there are different opinions on this. Some of you may say it's a really good implementation of zero day defenses. Some of you may say it's a poor implementation which might cause false positives. Either way, the test did complete successfully, so I'm really happy. Kaspersky was definitely better when it comes to resource usage. On the other hand, I really like the automation of Bitdefender. I think the way it just disinfects everything and doesn't give you any user prompts is handy in a lot of situations. Before we talk about that though, let's take a deeper look at the results. We will restart the system, I mean systems, delete the folder on the desktop, get rid of temp files, stuff like that, and then do a couple of second opinion scans and see how they both did in terms of the clean sheet record. Because we still need to verify if the systems were actually infected and what is on each system. Our second opinion scan results are here, so let's evaluate. Hitman Pro didn't find anything on either system, so clean sheet there. Malwarebytes didn't find anything on the Kaspersky system, however, it did find a couple of things on the Bitdefender system, but when we verify, these are not really threats. So for example, this Trojan, winlogons.exe, is actually just a 0kb file that doesn't even run. So it's likely part of a malicious executable that was partially blocked by Bitdefender. And same is the case for this spyware. It's just a dot URL thing. So again, I think it's part of the same malware that just made a couple of shortcuts. The actual program never really managed to execute is what I would guess. Maybe it was blocked by advanced threat defense. But either way, both these systems are perfectly clean. You can count a couple of traces against Bitdefender, but eh, these are not really traces. I mean, even if it was a PUP, I would consider that a threat, but a broken shortcut and an exe file that's zero kilobytes. I don't really think that goes against a clean sheet. Great result by both products. I'm really happy to see this. I know some of you may not prefer Kaspersky because of the whole Russia thing, but I really don't buy into it too heavily. I would still say pick whatever product is best for you in your given scenario. I think Bitdefender has a really comprehensive kind of suite that protects all your devices, works great. And the advantage is it's completely automated. If you turn on autopilot, you don't have to look at it if you're running it in a business environment or just have a lot of people using your computers or you want it on family computers, it's really easy to deal with. Kaspersky, on the other hand, might require a little bit of user intervention here and there, but it's much lighter. That's something I noticed in this test. So if you're really keen on resource usage, Kaspersky seems to be the better option. At least from the protection standpoint, I'm happy to recommend both of these products. Thank you very much for watching. If if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of this stuff, please like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. Also, if you decide to purchase either of these products, consider using my links in the description. It'll give you a discount and helps me out too. Check out the PCSecurityChannel.com for more results and stuff like that. We even have a Discord server. This is Leo, thank you for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.